Thank you. Please be seated. Vote is now. What I submit to you at that time, that second time, is that the only true and just verdict <coughs> based on that is that the defendant, Karen Reed, is guilty of murder in the second degree, striking the, uh, the victim, Mr. O'Keefe, with her car, knocking him back onto the ground, striking his head on the ground, causing the bleeding in his brain, swelling, and then leaving him there for several hours in a blizzard with temperatures in the teens, wind swirling around, snow piling up on his body until she comes uh, with Mrs. McCabe and Mrs. Roberts uh, just after 6 a.m. And that she is also guilty of vehicular manslaughter, um, operating under the influence of liquor, and that she is also guilty of leaving the scene. His examination of the vehicle, his examination of the scene, his examination of specifically some Toyota texture, because Lexus is uh, essentially owned by Toyota or vice versa. Uh, so there is some data that he's able to recover from that and back the vehicle up based on its known locations and travel and key cycles. And essentially, opines, uh, anticipate he'll opine that uh, around 1245 uh, in the morning when the vehicle was in front of the residence on Fairview, that for some perceptible period of time, that vehicle travels over 60 feet in reverse at over 20, approximately 24.2 miles per hour. Again, there's our evidence. Um, we'll hand out notebooks after the openings this morning so that you can take notes. They'll be provided. Karen Reed was framed. Her car never struck John O'Keefe. She did not cause his death, and that means that somebody else did. You will learn that it was no accident that John O'Keefe was found dead on the front lawn of 34 Fairview Road in Canton on January 29th of 2022. You will learn that at that address lived a well-known and well-connected law enforcement family in Canton, the Alberts. Because the Alberts were involved, and because they had close connections to the investigators in this case, Karen Reed was framed for a murder she did not commit. Oh, while under the influence of intoxicating liquor, and did so operate said motor vehicles that the lives and safety of the public might be endangered, and by such want. You'll learn that when John O'Keefe was found, he did not look like he had been hit by a car. You'll learn that he looked to have been attacked and beaten up. You'll learn that John O'Keefe was a large six foot two man who, if positioned behind a Lexus SUV, would have had his torso completely exposed to the rear of that vehicle, including to the taillight. You'll learn that no part of his torso was injured. There was no bruising, no redges, no scratches, no punctures. You'll learn that his chest and hips and legs were pristine, despite the Commonwealth's contention <coughs> that he was hit by a 6,000-pound vehicle.